Tools time. Back with another episode of our 44 mag gel block test series. And we will be looking at the Hornady 300 grain XTP bullet this trip. And uh, this is the heaviest offering that Hornady has in their XTP line of bullets. And uh, it's, uh, it's a workhorse. I mean, it, it really is. It's, it's the bullet that if you're hunting in short distances in thick brush uh, with a 44 mag uh, rifle or pistol, this is the, probably the bullet you want to use. Uh, it carries a whole lot of inertia, uh, downrange, enough to break through light twigs and sticks and stuff like that and without deflecting too bad and uh, can still get the job done when it gets to the target. So let's turn around and take a look at the loading and then we'll head on out to the range and see how this thing does in the gel block. So for this particular loading of the 300 grain, we've got a Hodgson H110 powder, Winchester, uh, large pistol slash large pistol magnum primers. And this is a, actually a box of 209 primers that I've kind of got relabeled just for the visual here. Uh, I've used up all of these primers and I did not keep any of the boxes to, uh, to do the pictures with. So shame on me for that. Um, 44 cal, 300 grain XDP bullet, and there's the part number on those bullets. And here is a quick look at this loading. And this is a whole lot of bullet down in the case, guys. And uh, like I said previously, uh, as you go from the 180 to the 200, 240 up to the 300, uh, the nose of the bullets does not change. It's all the extra weight is going down in the case. So um, I'll get a visual with uh, those four bullets side by side here in a few minutes and have it in the slideshow for you guys. All right, so let's head on out to the range and see how these things actually did in the gel block. All right, guys, next up in our 44 mag gel block test series is the 300 grain Hornady XTP. And uh, we'll be running this out of the 20 inch Rossi R92, the nine and a half inch Ruger Super Red Hawk, the four inch Taurus Tracker, and the two and three quarter inch Smith & Wesson combat <laughs> magnum. Velocity was 1374.9. All right, guys, so shot one, that was very low, uh, kind of skimmed across the top of the middle plate. So I'm going to reshoot uh, this uh, 300 grain XTP with the Rossi 20 inch. No velocity that time. But I think we got a good catch on this one. All right, guys, so that one was also low and curved down into the table. Um, so 300 grain, Rossi R92, shot number three. All right, we got a velocity, and I'm pretty sure a good catch on this one. Uh, the velocity was 1413.4 for a two-shot average of 1394 and a standard deviation of 19.2 foot per second. And let's go check out the catch this time. All right, guys, so the wound track we're wanting to look at for this 20 inch uh, shot it starts right here. And we've got immediate expansion on this. We've got a really nice permanent wound cavity down to about 11 inches, but we did not get that signature uh, uh, six way lead pedals coming off this like we have with some of the other XTP bullets. Uh, I don't see any fragments or shards. We come right on down, and this is actually the second shot I took. And this is the shot we're looking at right now. And we're in here at 31 and a half inches of total penetration. And uh, get zoomed in here. We did get good mushrooming of this bullet, uh, as well as uh, the second shot. And the third shot, if you can make it out, is laying, or the first shot, is laying over on the far side of the block. So, uh, all right guys, so really nice performance out of this 300 grain uh, with the 20 inch barrel. 
Let's go back and see if the nine and a half inch super red hawk can uh, put out a good a good mushroom as well. All right, guys. So I uh, ordered a 300 grain XTP bullet in the Ruger Super Red Hawk, nine and one half inch barrels. Ah, velocity and a catch. This has been scarce today. All right. So velocity of 1208.6 foot per second and let's go down and check out this catch all right guys this is the wound track for the uh, nine and a half inch super red hawk starting right here and it runs right across the top of this so it should be really easy to see looks like we got a lead shard down here at about 14 and a half inches and straight line penetration after that down to about 31 and a half inches again. And you can see the bullet laying in there. Looks like we did get some pretty decent expansion out of this. And uh, all right, let's go see what the shorter bow revolvers can do now. All right, next up is the Taurus four inch tracker, the M44 model and the 300 grain Hornady XTP. velocity. Pretty sure we got the catch, so let's go ahead and put one of these in the backstop. Velocity of 1074.6. 1074.6. All right, let's go check out the catch. All right, guys, here was our entry, but we scored it out the side here at about 23 inches. So let's go back and reshoot this one. All right, guys, Taurus uh, tracker, four inch. This is actually shot three, one in the backstop to get the velocity of all go, but we scored it out the side and did not get the catch. So let's see if we can get a catch on this one. So that one angled down and hit the uh, the metal plate and then bounced back up through the gel block. It's still sitting at about 32 inches of penetration, but let's see if we can get a clean catch on this. This is only going to leave two rounds for the red or for the Smith and Wesson, so I hope we can catch a velocity with one of those. velocity again. Let's go check this one out. All right, guys, our wound track starting right here and it runs pretty much what we've been seeing as far as the expansion goes. Uh, this bullet runs behind this wound track all the way down through here and comes to a final rest actually sticking out of the end of the second gel block. So we're gonna give this one like 32 and a half inches of penetration. Uh, it's laying right there above uh, one of the rifle rounds. All right, Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum coming up next. All right guys, Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum. And I've got two of these left. I'm keeping my fingers crossed so I can get a velocity in one of these two shots. Um, I'm gonna take a high shot on the block with this one just to make sure that I can hopefully get the, uh, the velocity on this. All right, we did get a velocity of 10.06.1. We 
did get the cats. So let's go check that one out. All right, guys, entry is right here. And uh, pretty much the same results. It looks like we've got uh, some expansion on this bullet almost immediately. Travels down through here. And we are sitting down here at about 26 and a half inches of overall penetration. Let's, uh, let's get these dug out of here and we'll take a better look at them once we get back All to the right, shop. All right, back in the shop and we've got these dug out of the block and check this out. So. 300 grain, um, excellent performance out of the 20 inch, the nine and a half Super Red Hawk and the, the four inch uh, Taurus. The uh, two and three quarter inch Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum, um, we didn't hardly get expansion. We just barely got the nose to open up on this thing. And uh, and then it was just pretty much straight line penetration after that. So, uh, you know, get a good look at these. All in all, though, uh, really good performance out of this bullet. All right, guys, there it is, the Hornady 300 grain XTP bullet and just another workhorse bullet uh, from Hornady. And, and I'm going to sound like a broken record before I get done because I've got two more of these to go, and I'm sure I'm going to have similar comment with each one of them. But uh, just another one of those rounds that just does an amazing job uh, down almost to uh, the ultra short barrels, uh, two and three quarter inch, uh, questionable performance out of the Smith and Wesson. Everything else did really well with this bullet though. Um, taking a look at some stats from our spreadsheet that's coming up, uh, do some quick numbers here. Uh, the 20 inch Rossi was at 1394. So just under 1400 foot per second with 31 and a half inches of penetration. Um, the rigor super red Hawk was at 1209. The tracker, the Taurus tracker was at 8,075 foot and the Smith & Wesson Model 69 was at 8,006 foot. So looking through all the numbers here and the spreadsheet will be posted up here right after the commentary. And uh, I'm going to say the Taurus tracker will take this round for uh, the best application. So at 1,075 foot per second, we had 95% expansion. Um, we had 99.1% weight retention, and we had 32 and a half inches of penetration. So we had the most penetration, we had the greatest percentage of weight retention, and we had the most final expansion with the four inch Taurus tracker. Uh, the Model 69, the two and three quarter barrel, uh, was not very impressive at all. We only had 54% expansion uh, and 26.5 inches of penetration. And the Super Red Hawk and the rifle actually put up similar numbers across the board in penetration, uh, weight retention, uh, expansion, and uh, with almost 200 foot velocity difference. So, you know, it just kind of goes to show that at some point uh, with the rifle uh, being from 1209 to 1394, we didn't really gain anything for that extra 200 foot velocity. These numbers also were at 15 feet. so. What we will gain with the extra 200 foot of velocity um, is a lot more distance. So this rifle is, is when it has lost 200 foot of velocity, uh, it will still equal the performance of uh, the Super Red Hawk. So if that's, if that's 75 or 100 or 150 yards down range, that's where that and the longer sight radius is where the 200 foot per second is going to play in. It's not going to change the performance up close, but it will extend how far away you can get that same performance uh, using the rifle. Final expansion was 0.677 for the rifle, 0.679 for the pistol. Both come out to 90% expansion. Weight retention was 95.0 for the rifle, 95.7 for the, the Super Red Hawk and 31 and a half inches of penetration for both. Uh, but what about that Taurus? I mean, that was, uh, go back and look at these numbers. Uh, and this is, this is pretty impressive. I, I'm, I'm really surprised that the four inch barrel uh, outperformed uh, some of the, the other longer barrels. And I will say this on the expansion. So 95%
expansion on the four inch barrel. Now, I'm not saying that the, the, the rifle and the Ruger didn't go through that same 95% expansion, but with all the extra energy they had, they actually opened up and then the force and the energy driving on through actually closed them back down a little bit. It folded all that nose open and then started laying it back on the body of the bullet. So if you imagine the four inch going in, uh, expanding initially up front and then holding that expansion all the way through 30, 32 and a half inches of gel block versus the rifle and the Super Red Hawk going in, opening up bigger, having a bigger temporary wound cavity at the beginning, and then that temporary wound cavity closing back down and having a smaller wound cavity all the way out to, to 30, 31 and a half inches. So there's a difference there in, in how much uh, of an impact that bullet has, uh, the, uh, the hydrostatic effect that it has on the tissues it's going through by staying bigger all the way through. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna quit talking. Guys, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. And as always, uh, if you if you don't care, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And scroll down and hit the share button. Uh, copy that link, post it in. If you're in 44 mag or reloading groups or uh, uh, revolver groups, copy that link and, and, and paste that link into your groups and share uh, share the video or go to uh, go to the playlist for this video. You can copy and share the entire link to the entire playlist as well. Uh, always appreciate those shares. Uh, all the new subscribers coming in, the new views, the new subscribers, that all generates revenue, which helps offset the cost of uh, the gel block and the reloading and, and all the other stuff that goes into this. So uh, uh, we'll always appreciate those shares, guys. And uh, as always, man from Kentucky Range Time, we'll catch you on the next one.